Hello viewers, I am Mayuresh Zoshi and I welcome you to the next lesson of Power Apps course. In previous lesson, we have seen the PowerFX function in Power Apps. In that lesson, we learned that how we can make use of different PowerFX functions to perform different operations. For example, we saw one example where we wanted to show the user logged in name and his email address. So we used a user function. Similarly, if we want to show the current timestamp, we have used the now function. So all these functions can be used in Power Apps to perform different operations. In this video, we are going to learn about button control in Power Apps. You should have used lot of Android and iOS applications where you might have seen lot of button controls. For example, if you have Amazon application, and when you want to add a product to your card, you will click on add a card button. So that button performs some operation in the background and it adds that product into your cart. Similarly, when you want to place the order, you click on place order button. So all these buttons are very helpful while developing the application and it performs different operations which will help you to get your desired output. So let's start with how we can use these button controls in Power Apps. So let's navigate to our Power App Studio. Then I have one blank screen. So under insert controls, just search for button and you can see that button control here. Whenever you click on that button, this button control will get added on your screen. Now, when you click on this button, nothing will happen. It will just give you the experience like you're clicking the button. But so far we have not written any function or PowerFX formula which will do some operation. So let's see how we can do that. So the very basic property or the most important property of button control is on select property. On select property basically execute the function whatever you will write here. So on click of that button whatever function you have written in this formula bar that function will get executed. So let's first see a few of the PowerFX functions. So let me give you one example of navigate function. So let's learn about navigate function. So navigate function is to change which screen is displayed. Okay. So we have one screen. Okay. So let me rename this screen or I will just put some label over here. I will set the label background property as orange and its text property as screen one. Okay, let's make it center line by clicking on this text alignment property and increase the font size to 20 and just made the color as white. Now we are on our first screen. Okay, now similarly, you can either create one more screen by clicking on this blank screen or you can just make a duplicate of the screen. So let's make a duplicate. And now you see that one more screen is added. You can rename this screen from here. So let's call it as screen 2 and also the heading as screen 2. Now switch back to screen 1. And on button on this button control, let's call this. Now the button is saying the text as button. So we can change it to something like go to screen one. So what's our requirement is that whenever I click on okay, let's make it go to screen two. Whenever I click on go to screen 2, it should navigate my application to the second screen. And on the second screen, whenever I click on this button, I will say go back to screen 1. So these are my two operations. You can make this button big. Okay. Now let's play this application. Now, whenever you click on the second button, it's not navigating to screen 2. Why? Because we have not written any function on on select property of this button. So just select that button, go to on select property and write a power FX function here. So what is power FX function? It's we are going to use the navigate function. Navigate function is used to navigate between different screens. 
So just select navigate and you see that what is the target, the target screen to navigate to. So which is our target screen in this case? It's screen 2 because we want to navigate to screen 2. So just write screen 2 and it will give you the option to select it from here. So just click on screen 2 then close this bracket. Similarly, on this button which is go back to screen 1, we will write a similar formula but in in this case we will say navigate to screen 1 okay now let's switch back to screen 1 and play the application now when you see when I clicked on go to screen 2 it navigated me to screen 2 and when I clicked on go back to screen 1 it navigated me to screen 1 so this is the very basic control and most important control in Power Apps applications. We are going to use this control very frequently while developing different applications. The next important property of the button is display mode. So if you see on the right hand side, we have the display mode or you can find the sa same property from this drop down. So click on display mode property and here in the drop down, you can see that we have three different options disabled edit or view so when you click on disabled you see that you cannot click on that button anymore and this is helpful to do the validations for example in future when we are going to create the forms if the user do not fill in the complete form we will disable the submit button so these kind of validation we can achieve with the help of display mode property of the button so if I say view, it will still not be clickable, but however, it just give it, it will show me that it's in view mode, but it's similar to the disabled one. So button can be clicked only on click off only when the disabled mode is edit. Now, what's the difference between disabled and view mode? Okay. As a beginner, you don't need to worry much about it at this moment, but just think like, Disabled means user will see that the button is disabled and you cannot click on it. Okay, but when you the view mode of the button is similar to the disabled, but it just give you the appearance like it's not disabled, but the functionality is similar. You cannot click on a button where the display mode is view or disabled. You can only click the button when its display mode is edit. Then obvious the common functions like the color property. So you can change the color or the you can see we can make it we can change the color of the text or we can change the background as well similarly we have the border property so such buttons you can develop in power apps so as we go further in this course I will show you some tricks about how you can make the buttons beautiful how you can work on the UI of your power apps to make it look more better. But for now, the basic understanding is that button controls are very helpful in power apps to perform different operations. And the most important properties of the button controls are on select property and the uh, display mode property. Rest of the properties are just very basic properties which you can easily understand by yourself. For example, you can change the text of the button. If you want to put a tooltip on this button, what is tooltip? On, on when, when your mouse hover over that button, you will see some text. So for example, I will say sample text tooltip. Okay, this is the string. So now when I play and when I hover over it, you can see that you can get that tooltip, sample text tooltip. So all these properties uh, you can Play yourself. I'm not going to cover each and every property in this video. These are quite self-explanatory. So I hope you liked this video about button control in Power Apps. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about different variables or variable types in Power Apps. Till then, if you have any questions or queries, please let me know in the comment section. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel to get the future updates on this Power Apps course. And finally, thanks for watching.